uh, just to start to introduce myself first, and yes. then I, I will shut up and listen to you because <laughs> I, I'm, this is my first time. Uh, you know, I am the scientist working on medical devices. Uh, I live in Geneva, and uh, also travel between Geneva and the United States uh, frequently. I have business in the United States. Uh, right now, I'm in the United States, actually. Um, actually, in Texas, I just finished my morning tennis uh, practice. Uh, I didn't have time to shower, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm also based in Geneva. Uh, who is this? Sorry, Jonathan. Oh, uh, Jonathan. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, nice to meet you, Jonathan. So, yeah, I, I don't have my video because I always have issues with my connection on this app. Yeah. So uh, I had uh, potentially two things that I might float in terms of discussions if you want to talk about stuff. Um, I would like to bounce off maybe some of the exchanges we had on uh, Slack and talk about framing. Yeah. What is yeah. the level of framing? and how does that work so one one idea and the second idea is talking about i don't know if everyone is knowledgeable enough about this but i I've, I've really been reading a lot about abduction and i wondered if people wanted to discuss that so those are two ideas okay great uh first i wanted just to, to thank Stephen for for the introduction uh and yeah, I don't know uh, if we, yeah we can pick one of the of the topic. I don't know, Matt, if you had anything else in mind. Oh, if it's fine for you, yeah. <laughs> okay. So or maybe, or maybe Stephen, as he's as he's working on on some concrete project right now, maybe uh, if Stephen wanted to share some of the challenges or what prompted him to join this kind of uh, discussion group, because I imagine if you come here, is that you probably have some things you're um issues you're trying to tackle and things you're trying to work through and understand and always an interesting starting point to to talk about maybe some uh, some concrete things so that would be another avenue i actually even have a concrete problem if you guys even want to talk about it um uh it's something to do with refinancializing education away from debt-based, but into like more of an upside uh, convex uh, risk profile, one that kind of mirrors education's natural tendencies and behaviors. And, um, and, and with that value alignment, you might actually get better um, uh, 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 incentives, right? So then you're not putting people eight hours into a classroom and say, ah, now they're educated, rather <laughs> you effective one hour you know, sessions that actually lead to, um, you know, reading, you know, um, texts and stuff and getting actionable um, uh, courses of, of, of understanding. So sprints, basically sprinted education. But yeah. Is this, I saw your post on, um, I, it was had to do with financing higher education, I, I believe. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I did, I did read it and uh, I, I don't know if is that related to that? Correct. Yeah. So basically, the the idea is to um, uh, make a market pricing index where you can use Black Scholes to um, price call options because uh, you know, in, in in a sense, insurance are basically put options, right? So you basically use mm -hmm. the, the, the same um, financial metrics. You know, the the your your, your Greeks. You know, your deltas, gammas, and betas. And, uh, and you price premiums that way. But in this case, it's kind of reverse. So a call option is that you get a grant from the investor and the investor gets your upside. The nice thing about it is that, um, you know, for many people who are very talented, they don't get good career placements, right? Because there's a misalignment between recruiters, um, their incentives and getting, you know, the right person at the right place instead of getting the right person they usually try to get the safe person right which is basically a check boxing you know you have you, you meet all these things and mm -hmm. even if it's a true good fit right like you know it's it's just 
the person met the boxes, um, the recruiter fulfilled their duty, right? Um, the, the, the opposite idea would be, well, a high um, upside uh, risk aligned investor um, could basically like open doors for a high caliber talented person. And therefore you could actually get faster accelerated career progression and you get like basically a richer life out of it, right? You get into like a position that's, um, that's, that's suited to your talents. Um, but you know, you've got a, a, a pre-summed or pre-arranged agreed upon uh, compensation beginning. And call options can always be, you know, uh, uh, you know, it, it could be a liquidity instrument too. So then you can always buy it out in the open market again. Uh, but yeah, I mean, those are just some ideas to talk about. Uh, I think the only thing I really kind of wanted to work on is just maybe concepts on how to uh, take away the fraud of it too, because you can imagine like somebody who's at the peak of their career, they're earning, who just wants to like get exit money and retire. They could just do that, right? In some ways I'm thinking, oh, you know, you're, you're defrauding investors, but in another way it could actually be a good thing because you don't really want to be there anymore. And so it's it's one way for society to buy you out. So then you're not doing more harm, you know, in your job than you would otherwise be. I don't know. So I think there are a lot of things here. I just have a very simple question, which is how do the rich guys find the people they want to sponsor? Yeah, so um so I would have to make kind of the first layer of exchange first. So that means that like I have to under. If, is there a salary in which, you know, yourself with too much uh, a stress or something? And you could you could name as high of a price as you want, one point five million or whatever per year, and and I could price uh, using Black Scholes um, an options contract of like ten or twenty years. You can get you know ten thousand dollars upfront, and and then I I take that contract out into the exchange, um, sell that to uh, institutional investors, right, or family offices that might be interested. This might actually be a tax advantage situation because. You know, based upon where you live or whatever, you would pay like a very high rate of marginal tax anyways. And by um, kind of like disassociating that and turning into like the revenue of, you know, like an LLC of a different, you know, like entity or whatever, um, you kind of like risk arbitrage the, the tax. And then um, so, so you know, there's there's some synergies in that. But another one would be, um, you know, like um, very simply investors um, can sell to other investors when um, a, a particular person like really becomes the Michael Jordan of their portfolio, right? So, yeah. But Matt, I, I think you, you think very fast and you, you have tons of ideas, very interesting ideas, but I, I personally, I, I think it might be difficult for, for people who haven't read your post, definitely, and I, I'm also struggling to follow all of the different threads. So I think the core of your idea is this notion of using using options to finance uh, people's careers, if I understand correctly. Maybe, could you maybe just explain that bit in a in a kind of simple way, so that so that we can we know what we're talking about? Sure. Okay. So um, one one of the problems that I'm trying to solve is that there is a misalignment of interest with the financier and the assets, right? So assets being humans who, uh, especially in America, which you know, it has a student loan debt crisis, right? Um, basically, there are not enough jobs that make students happy, right? With, 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 with you know, their, um, their investment in their own education. But, you know, McDonald's jobs, right? Like low income jobs, but, these jobs are still satisfactory for society in terms of paying off student loans. So, you know, basically the, the, the debt providers of student loans are institutional investors 
and they make the rules in our political system. And they create the economic realities because they ultimately write the rules, right? So, so we have the reality of many you know, low-income jobs primarily to serve the purpose of paying back you know, debt, right? So we have a, you know, a, a servitude system. That means there is not enough of an alignment. And this misalignment means that when you have adversarial counterparties, so like, for instance, when you do a, a, a when you when you make a trade or you 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 sell something, you lose something in order to gain something, right? So there's an adversarial relationship, and and and, and that's the yin and yang of any transaction. And immediately, you know, the the your 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 financier doesn't care if you're the you're the CEO, or you have a high value job, or you're happy or not. It, they they only care about their downside risk mitigation. But you are kind of like the equity owner of, of yourself, of the 100% of your portfolio, and, um, and you want upside. So there's a misalignment of risk because basically you want to take a break and figure out how to get a, a high paying job for yourself and for your career. But for them, they just want you to just pay off that steadily over time. Fixing this misalignment um, is probably difficult. One of the ways in which you can do it is you can have um, the investors be equity. So instead of providing debt and then having you pay a percentage of that debt down, they can have a percentage of your, um, your income, your future income. So then you have that alignment, right? The problem of that is like, oh, well, now all of a sudden they own a piece of you. And that kind of gets into this like weird slavery bit, right? And so I'm trying to think of a way in which you can have really good alignment in terms of what education really is fundamentally, right? Education is ultimately, in its purest form, inspiration, right? Inspiration at the right time, at the right place. Sometimes you might not get inspiration at the right time, at the right place. And so that's why you have to design curriculum in order to catch it. But, um, but ultimately, it's this concept which is that you could lose everything, right? You could, you could be an educator, teach a lesson, and that lesson, your students learn nothing, right? That's, that's a risk. But, um, you know, in the small chance that, um, that somebody was highly influenced and highly inspired by that lecture um, could, could reap 100 times, you know, that reward of that one hour session, right? And that's kind of the nature of, um, you know, kind of call options in terms of its convexity. And if you align both the financial um, uh, risk profile with the actual, with, with the natural um, outcome risk profile that you're trying to look for, then you might actually get um, an acceleration of what you really want out of uh, education. So, um, so then you could actually reduce. Uh, you know, the, 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 not only, you know, higher education debt in the U.S., um, or, you know, inflation, right? It's like 25x the last um, uh, uh, 40 years or whatever. And don't think it doesn't affect Europe, right? Because ultimately, every professor, you know, in, in Europe or uh, the U.S., they see the same crisis in terms of salaries, right? And so, no, there is, there's no doubt that whatever happens in the U.S. in terms of educate, higher education inflation does happen on European soil, but on the back end where it's not shown to, you know, be, be fundamentally the, the average consumer. So fixing education writ large ultimately means aligning risk profiles of how it's being financed. So that's, I know it's a little bit of a, a, a longer tale than uh, I, I wanted, but... Uh, I, I'm glad I got here right at the beginning of this kind of recap. Um, you are aware that this is a very American solution to this problem, right? Like you have atomized this down to a one-to-one -one adversarial economic model that has nothing to do with collective good. And that is so 100% American. 
right? Like there's there's nothing in your model that considers a kind of an alternative non-transactional value of education for the common good. And it comes down to a one transaction, which you've even said is like kind of adversarial. But you know, there, economic transactions don't have to, with the no, but, but they don't have to be like there is something of there are sometimes transactions where one person isn't capitalizing on the other right like that's an american viewpoint where it's a zero-sum game and like if i'm in business i'm gonna fuck you and you're gonna lose and that's how especially silicon valley thinks about stuff right so you're thinking about it like if if you're trying to solve this problem be aware that you're trying to solve it from within a fucked up system you know <laughs> it's kind of the thing right <laughs> like, like because i just like fire with fire which is um so one way is you can say financialization is evil and so this is my first approach in my article which is like you can say financialization is you know the marxist critique which is that this is actually what's causing the problem the debt burden, the you know the mm -hmm. serial um you know counterparty um but then you know, when you go the opposite direction, which is you take away financialization, you don't actually have capital in order to build infrastructure, right? Like you don't have resources, you don't invest correctly. In fact, you get a lot of bureaucrats who, who say they will do the right things, but don't. Um, so then- don't you, think, don't you think though that by reducing it to the kind of like, almost like libertarian idea of the one-to-one -one transaction, that you're missing, like that doesn't, that scope doesn't allow for the thought of infrastructure in a way. Like, like there is a benefit to educating the populace, like in civics, for example, right? And, and that when you just kind of talk about it on a one-to-one -one thing, I mean, I have something else to say about that one-to-one -one thing, which I think is kind of interesting in that if you're thinking about it on that model, for example, there is a really interesting notion of risk that I don't think that people take into account when they're doing things like choosing a career or deciding to go to school mm -hmm. or something like that, that you are in fact taking on a debt load, which is in fact a risk and a hedge against your future, right? Like your future earning potential. And right now those things are out of whack. And that I don't think that people are making those decisions based on an understanding of the inherent risk of taking on debt. Like if you're a business and you're taking on debt, you're taking on debt usually with some kind of plan in mind that says that I can overcome this debt because I'm going to leverage this into something. That, and I don't know that in, you know, like the guidance counselor's office in grade 10 or 11, those kinds of conversations are being had, right? Like, like you are taking on debt. Taking on debt is a risk. Have you really thought out like this strategy for your future? Right. Like I think in, so in, in terms of your particular model, which I think is based on a kind of a, like a limited foundation, I think that notion of risk is really important and the, and educating people who are taking on that risk is important, right? It's a kind of like a pre-education for your education, right? Um, and that, that's a really, I think that's, a, that's kind of a key, a key part to that because then people might take, like, for example, an apprenticeship model is an alternative to what is it you're talking about. And those, Kevin's in Switzerland, I don't know how, you know, how prevalent it still is, but that the system that I grew or grew up with knowing about Switzerland was a really efficient like apprenticeship model, mm. which allows you or a co-op model here in Canada in, in certain programs, um, which which allows you to learn the skills of your trade in situ while being compensated under a framework that um, A, make sure that you're learning and B, make sure that you're being compensated for your learning because you're being productive while you're learning right so there so there's that like there are alternative models within that and so i think even within but i think that
<laughs> uh, well, thank you, Matt, for the, the the answer. I have some points. I don't know if like I don't feel like they they were necessarily taken into account in in your first answer. So uh, let me know if if you feel like it it, it goes in the same direction or, or not. But the several points. It's one that I find really like obvious to me right now is that this kind of model that incentivizes two things to me that are that can be pre, uh, you know can be problematic is that first it it sounds to me that you you will create a system that's uh pushed towards even more pressure around um um what is the term sorry I just lost it um like the idea of uh being efficient being productive right because because then everything uh you know is reduced to your ability to to be that efficient person that uh, pays for what is the, it you know pays for what he, he was worth at the beginning right so pays back right so in that direction it, it, it pushed towards even more a productivist type of approach it's one of the risks I perceive at least and and another risk is to like in like increases um, um like diversity issues right because you have communities where with necessarily uh, a lack of access to some services and especially in education um that then will be worth less in terms of individuals than others because of where they are located and their social conditions right and this will necessarily be into, taken into account in the evaluation of uh, of their worth as individuals that can access you know, education. And this is where I don't see how the system can compensate for that if we stay at the level of the individuals, right? Uh, so it leans, it, like it now it leans towards uh, another point I want to, to make is, well, I have some issues and it's because probably we, I am a European guy, you know, uh, to see to see it uh, as a per, like it, it would be an if, maybe an efficient model, but not a um, um, not necessarily efficient for the for the society in a sense where if you don't take into account um, like if you don't put in in the system other things that counterbalance uh, a one one relationship where it's always necessarily asymmetric because the one that owns the money. Um, they are the one that can, you know, uh, decide for the market. Basically, they, they can, they can, like, this is the problem with VCs in, in the current market. You know, they create like a, a fake, they can create fake bubbles of, uh, speculation because if everyone invests in the same tech, for instance, then it, like, everything becomes like really, uh, it puts it in the, the, the spotlight. Uh, everyone wants to invest in it, although no companies at all make money out of it right but everyone invests in it so like you have companies worth past the, the million where they are just one small startup with four guys uh that does one text thing you know uh and they don't they are not able to 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 make benefit from from their business model but they can still remain in the game because because VCs are pouring money in, in the in the thing right so you create like a distortion of the market and I can totally see that happening with a model like that, right? So you need some kind of things that counterbalance that. And this is where I want maybe to introduce something like, because I find what you are say, doing and the idea behind interesting because you, you start from where you are now, where the system is, and you want to make it evolve in a, in a better direction, basically, instead of changing everything as was proposed by Mark in like, roughly proposed by mark um so i i see that as interesting now you for me it, it lacks the introduction of other things that counterbalance the the asymmetry in the system and maybe this is where it would be interesting to create some kind of entities that are not individuals but represent either or maybe you need both i don't know either the some kind of community level right where some community aspects are um, um, are taken into account and and counts in the balance, 
right of the the decision so it's not only the people that have the money on the market to invest on people that can shape the market the way they want they have to to respond to other th- signals that are non uh, individual based uh, signals right uh, so community level sounds like kind of interesting and then uh, soci- societal outputs like maybe an, an entity that represents that not necessarily output but outcomes uh, like what do we want as a society for tomorrow? Uh, you know, like what kind of, um, what would be, uh, because if, if you just follow the logic, you have, you, you, you end up with a system that, you know, maximize for those who want to, who wants to study for jobs that pay more, because then it becomes more efficient for the market to invest in them. Right. Makes sense. Um, that everyone can access to this kind of job. So necessarily the one that have the best conditions at the, the beginning to get this kind of job will, will have them. So like it would create also a, a, an inf- like a, a speculation around those kind of jobs that are highly paid, uh, that would be favored by the market. So you want to also to, to counterbalance that aspect with other criteria that are not just how much it like how much people can make out of a job, uh, but how does it serve the society in general? Like maybe there's other criteria to take into account, right? I don't know. Like it's just my rough things in mind that I I had after hearing all the points and the discussion. Uh, yeah. Thank
Bye, thanks for joining. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Stephen. Uh, thank you for joining, and I hope you to see you next time. <laughs> yeah, he, he wrote that he, he has other things to do. Yeah, 
No worries. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Um okay, I don't know if Mark came back. He said he had to to step away for a couple of minutes. I don't know if you come if you're back, but um yeah it's uh it's an interesting it's an interesting topic. Uh maybe I'm too yeah uh I I, I mean like <clears throat> there's already so many ways to financialize things especially in the in the US I, I do feel that uh I'm, maybe I'm too european minded on on that but to me education should be is a is a basic citizen thing that that should be provided to people and that's my really this is deeply what i believe about education and this should not be um this is not a pressure that should be put on people and the reason for that to me the reason for that is is that because education is not for the people it's for the society right uh and, and that's the main point uh, behind that now that companies have to pay somehow for that is to me is an interesting topic because today we put that pressure of financing at least in europe financing education on on Uh, on governments and institu public institutions, um, which is not totally bankrupt as, as an idea, right? Because it's uh, because it's for society that you do it. That it's it makes sense somehow that the society pays for that, right? Um, but uh, but who benefits from that the most today is not necessarily society directly, right? Because the means of the education is from a productivist perspective right so education like what like if you if you come back to the like the how education was framed at least mainly in in, in france and uk i don't know for the rest of europe but mainly the point of educating people was to get a job and get why why that because getting a job means more people who can produce more stuff for more people that can buy it Right. So the more people have a job, the more people produce stuff, the more people can buy stuff. Therefore, you, you know, you create this cycle of of consumerism, basically, that we are in right now. Right. So that I mean, like it makes sense in the current uh, perspective. But does it will still make sense in the near or long term f future is Is still, I mean, it's it's up to question. Like it's it's really uh, an interesting question that is not something that that uh, and this is where I want to emphasize that is is interesting question to discuss. But I don't feel like uh, it it has like it doesn't feel right that it it needs to be thought by designers that works in um, like in um, in companies, right? Because Because it's not the place where it would be solved to me, especially in Europe. I don't know. Again, I I'm, I know how basically the system works in the US, but I won't speak for it because I I don't know it well enough to to know what are the the leverage and what are the you know the constraints of this of this system. So it, it's really hard to say. But at least in Europe, in in although the systems are different from countries to countries, um, they still have the same underlying view about the education which is on that <laughs> on that matter is really different from the us uh for instance right so uh, i would say that this aspect this aspect is interesting now i think like one one thing you mentioned at the beginning which is about how uh educators are paid right professors and and, and people like such are paid uh is from a, a global a, a, like a, a global market perspective, right? Uh, and 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 this is a good and an interesting point. Like, is it tr is it right to index is uh, like to to create an index of uh, a salary for these people based on their like their knowledge and expertise and I don't know what in a specific fields. Uh, 
well, the, the value, their value, the value of their knowledge, at least, it should be said as, as such, the value of their knowledge and their expect- expertise is um, indexed on this global market, right? And how, how much they will be, they would be paid, um, like in on, on the market by, ideally by the the, the best price they, they would be paid, right? And and I, I agree that it's it's somehow it's fucked up, right? Because because it means that good professors cannot teach in poor universities, and and that's totally fucked up. Uh, on on that on that basis, so <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. I, I hear some. Like it, it cuts between words. I don't hear all the words. Sorry. Mm-hmm. 
I'm sorry, I, I don't hear you anymore. Like it just uh, it cuts when you you speak. Like I hear the beginning of the word and I don't hear the the end. I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I see, I see your point. I, I totally, I see your point. I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I see your point. I, 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 I don't necessarily disagree with with the idea. It's, it's just like I, I, I personally believe that you need um some kind of I, I don't know. There's a term in French. I don't have the term in English, but garde fou, uh, like uh something that that prevents the market to. Uh, to go crazy right and and this is where the like, us is really not for that kind of stuff it's it's basically it means like you know uh intervention on the market by the government right and um this is where i believe that i agree a little bit of that can be like beneficial only if you have this not necessarily an intermediary but something that prevents the market to you know, to move too quickly, to to have this, um, you know, this volatility. Because if you have that in the in what you are what we are discussing, you just create more problem than you that you actually solve, right? It's it's a uh, uh, and this is exactly where the issue is. Is like you are you you have to find a kind of balance in the system. Right for it to reach its uh, optimal uh, state, uh, where where it be, it creates the the beneficial outcomes you want to see, and it it prevents the kind of 
you know, non-beneficial outcomes that you don't want to see, right? And this balance, it's uh, like you don't see that many financial systems that are uh, properly self-balancing. You always see, you know, financial systems that are self not non-self-balanced, but balanced by other other means, right? That you you enforce some rules that for constrain the market to to balance itself in a certain direction. Like I don't say it's always working well. <laughs> it's far from working well always. But you you but it's it's one of the most effective way you have to 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 put constraints on the market because otherwise the constraints are organic. And the one that creates within a transactional system is necessarily one of asymmetry of like it's an asymmetry in favor of the one that, that of those that have the the most power on the system and it's always the same like we <laughs> we know it right so it's like it's no surprise right so uh yeah this is my only issue but i i wouldn't say that by necessity the idea is is wrong because i do understand what you also bring with that but I would say time and scale are two main factors factors that I see um, where you have to work. Like, like it, it's like with education, for instance, in Switzerland, I can change my mind and go in a totally different direction. Like I say, okay, I want to become a doctor. And in two years from now, I realize, no, it's not what I want anymore. I want to go and I don't know, uh, um, robotics. And it's two different things, right? Like from a standard education uh, framework, it would be crazy for me to stop my studies in two like in two years of investment and go in, in another direction. But here in Switzerland, you have always open doors and and bridges between you know courses and 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 courses. So you you can do that without having to start from the beginning. What is interesting in any financialized system is if you can reassess your investment on, you know, uh, on a timely basis. So you can change your mind, right? Because investing in my education for the 10 next years, uh, not knowing if I, I would be happy with that choice, but having like being forced to, to, to commit to the, the choice anyway until the end because someone put money on me at some point and I have to pay back. Like it makes, like it makes no sense. Right. But it's what happens to many as well. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm not hearing you again. I, I'm really sorry. I don't know what happens. No, it's uh, jammed up. Do you, yeah, do you have a headset or some kind of um, next to mic? I don't know. That can help. I'm I'm really sorry. I, I don't get what you what you are saying. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> sorry, I don't get what you are saying. Okay.
<laughs> cool. Now it's it's working way better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mhm mm Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm. Well, I'm not. I'm not in the. I'm not in the. Yeah, I'm in the insurance, but I'm not working on that aspects in of the of the insurance. But I agree. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Hmm. Mm hmm.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have a question. I have a question for you. I have two questions. Like, one one is I agree. I agree with you, and and this is why even in in design and innovation, you you try to work on 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 a model of uh, smaller strategies, uh, a portfolio of strategies, right? And you try to work with like smaller budgets, but then you reassess more often what you are investing in. Right as as strategies, rather than having like a, a two years plan and a budget for two years, and you realize that you are wrong after three months. It's right. So where, where basically it's what happens in many institutions, right? It, they, they plan for ten years, they, they 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 plan the budget for ten years, and after one year they realize that it's off anyway, and they know it from the beginning. Like they start by no, like. With the the idea in mind that it will necessarily be be bankrupt after after one year, and 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 they wait for five years this way, you know, until it's reassessed for the next ten years because they do plan for ten, but they reassess every five years, you know. Usually it works like that, and and like it's it's shitty and it's dumb, but they do it anyway because this is how they they are incentivized to work, right? So I agree with you. Like this this is um this is an issue. Now, why? Uh, this is where it's where it's 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 uh, maybe there's another frame to it. Like, why is that that we are buying options for education, and why not having um, to buy the idea of education and it's a shared value system. Yeah. Well, it 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 depends. It, right, it depends because if if the the paid one is is like it's is uh, valued more because it's it's better, it's judged as bigger quality and it increases your chance to find a, a work. Right then. Quality level, yeah, I agree. Yeah, then, mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. No, I'm, I'm just thinking like, like because we are just right like, discussing about the idea and this and thinking about it while while we are discussing. I, I'm just proposing that we, if we had to shift how we, what we buy at the end, right? Because here the transaction is between one person that want education and people that have money and willing to invest on on someone that wants to learn something because of what it can achieve with that, right? This is basically the the mechanism. Now, if it were to be different, if it if you if if you were to buy, maybe not with money. This is where I want to 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 emphasize. Maybe you could buy the something that represents the knowledge you could acquire, right? Like some some kind of, I don't know. Let's say let's say, um, um, aero. I don't know. A special engineering, for instance, like a you know. Uh, engineering specialized in in spatial stuff right to go to space and stuff like that is is a thing that you can buy right so you are you are a student and instead of um of requiring a loan or someone to invest in you uh we say oh if you do something you acquire that a piece of that thing that is knowledge about engineering space space engineering right and 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 this is um this you you own it you, you you own a piece of it right for for your life for your entire life right so at some point you will earn something from it because you work i don't know the work term can be framed whatever mechanism is defined as work okay and that's saying work as someone do something but anything that that fits in that definition should 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 be fine right then to earn that thing, right? And there's some kind of retribution from that, uh, not only to the individual, but to other people that contribute to that knowledge, right? So educators, right? I don't know. I'm just, I like, it's, it's kind of ut utopian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it, it wikipedia is good if if you really know you already know what you are looking for and you you want more details about it but if you don't know anything about you are what you are looking for it's 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 clearly not an entry point it's it's yeah, I, yeah, I agree. It's it's more an advanced tool, more than anything else. Hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
Ja. <laughs> yeah, and, and you you need more granularity in in the type of knowledge if you wanted to to work. Like you 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 can you can you can even argue that knowledge itself is just a network, right? Already, so. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well it's 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 naive but it's it, it's still like it still works to some extent today like with it with its you know fair share of, of problems but it responds it's response to a different But look at look at what you know because what you are saying is is I agree, uh, and it 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 becomes to it, now it's it goes to an extreme in the sense that like if you look at basically the the privatization of knowledge, uh, which is plat which are platforms like Coursera for instance, uh, or other platforms as such, right, uh, which. You could argue that they, they do some kind of public service in a sense because they are not that much expensive and still get you access to like good universities, right? Uh, but on the other side, um, they incentivize this privatization of, of, of knowledge. And when you look at what Google is just doing with some of their courses on computing, uh, on, on stuff like that, right? Uh, and and that you know that having a certification from that kind of uh, you know online school from a course by Google will get you a job at Google will increases your chances to get a job there right it creates like this you know this uh, this cycle of uh, of yeah of, like it, it's all the same at yeah. At, Yes. Well, it's it's a service basically. It's almost like a service. If they wanted to do it, they they. they... Yes, yes, uh, we totally agree. Yeah, uh, this is, yeah, this is where apprenticeship, as it is performed in 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 in, in Europe, most of the case. In most of the case, is is not handled by private institutions for that exact reason, because because otherwise it's it's it becomes ex yeah exactly exactly.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is another thing that to to to. No, no, sorry, go go ahead, finish, finish what you were saying. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I, I'm. I would say I'm. I'm, sca I'm skeptical of the idea that you can calculate all of all of that uh, always. But uh, I'm not the I, I'm not a mathematician, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. Uh, but I, I'm. I'm skeptical that. Uh, of of some aspect, but it, it's not even a point here because I. I, I I find it interesting to explore it at, at least, at, you know, at the very least. Um, on on the on on the point you were saying before, uh, I would say it's interesting to, like you said, well, you you create then a process, um, and and I do feel like there's something that is virtuous about that about that aspect. It's like it 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 forces the system to slow down for some reason, right? Uh, and the perfect way to prevent volatility in any market, right, is to is to put constraints that re that reduce the amount of uh, of um, um, a vegetation within this system, right? So it becomes less incentivized to reduce the feedback loops between each feedback loops, right? Because otherwise, it get, it keeps on going because the, it's the goal. It's basically it becomes a goal, right? Uh, and 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 this is where any intervention from a public institution within a financial market is a form of slowdown, right? Because it it's it's not working on the same uh, time frame than than the market anyway, right? So so I'm not saying it's always good. But it's always produced something that is akin to a slowdown to some aspect because it put constraints in the in the system. And you can do the same thing without the public institution. You can artificialize uh, a slowdown because it's a uh, it's a uh, necessary uh, friction, right? It's it's one that is useful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it was basically what happened with the, you know, um, the FX markets uh, for a long period of time, right? It... Hmm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just. This is where I propose to say, okay, if we shift, shifted the um, the system to not be. Not, yeah, it can be money. It can be money. It can be money translated into something else, right? We do that all the time with 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 markets, so it's it's not really that an issue. But but this is where I find it interesting because then. Because to me, the issue lies more in the idea that it's a one-one relationship, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i agree but you, you you agree that you can achieve the same kind of results without without the people like removing people as entities of the system and adding another layer it, it's sort of like you can do the same like if you look at the carbon market for instance is exactly exactly that Yes. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Agreed.
Yes. Yes. And 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 it's not nest like it's and it's perceived as a natural thing like it like it has to happen somehow right uh, which is not entirely true like it's it's not entirely true like it's one of the out outcome of any group. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's the this idea that you yeah you create basically a, a shared medium of 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 interaction right it's where it's where people don't realize how much of a designer they are if if they want to be right in that sense because because one of my theories is that design is about is about uh create like all the activities that enable someone to create a medium for interaction right and the medium for interaction can be about anything like it can be a process it can be uh it can be a conversation it can be uh, a product it can be whatever we imagine like it can be just a, a sheet of, of paper with drawings on it right it can be whatever we, get, we want to it to be and unless it like it has to the basic properties is it's in, it's collaborative because it allows interactions, right? Now the reduction. <laughs> yeah, so it's the design the design with a small d, uh, and designer with a small d because it's not a discipline. It's just uh, an observation of how things works, right? So it's it's to me it's it's my definition of design as a general uh, understanding of it, right? Uh, and I make the distinction because obviously there is a discipline of design with specific knowledge, uh, you know, uh, attached to it. But uh, I, I just want to say, like, it's where people are really designers in a generic, uh, general sense uh, of it. Um, now, yes, yeah, so. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, w I would I would probably have like more in, in activists uh, point of view about it and and would say that it's uh it's um it's a co-evolution, right? That soon as someone has an idea about something uh it it it, it is created. Like it's it it exists because because the fact that someone had an idea is already an affordance of the of the content that allowed it to to happen, right? So it's already a coevolution. Like so, there's no point to say, "Well, this is first and this is second, uh, You know, in this, it, to me, it's it's my understanding of it, right? At least, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes.
Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is an affordance of of the context. To me, it's it's it is an affordance of the context, right? It, 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 if you like it, um, it's because. I, it's uh, it's because the, the the way it is in in your right in your context in your environment makes like it has more sense it has more meaning to you right and the meaning is uh, is a shared thing between you and your environment so you would be in another place uh, maybe this idea would be less less of of a, less meaningful for you right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't speak exactly the same language uh, on that, but I understand what you are meaning, what you what you're saying. <laughs> yes. Yes. I I I know I I know I I know about that, but I I feel like it it assumes that there's computation in the middle, so interpretation and computation, which to me to me makes less sense. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and so to come back to come back to your point, like education is poor at teaching people um how to collaborate. I totally agree. And then to me personally, I would spend more time before teaching any specific knowledge is to teach people how to work together. Right, it would be like the first step, uh, like in a n not necessarily a first step, but a thing that comes with the learning, right? Uh, in in a sense, but I would I would say I would I would say, like I agree with you. We we teach people to be good, like to be. It's I, I'm I'm not saying that because this uh, I don't like the way I will say it. To be frank, but. But it 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 it's it, it's 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 a bit autistic way of 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 working, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, do do you think do, do you think it's it's entirely entirely like a, 
I'm telling you that I, I, I don't know, like there's, there's also an, uh, like education is incentivized to create experts. Whereas what we are discussing right now, the collaboration is, is the, um, is the tool of the generalist. Because if you know how to collaborate with, with people, you don't care about what, but the, the knowledge itself, like the content is not interesting in that aspect, right? Yes. Yes. And yeah, that, this is exactly why you, you don't put, like it's not by putting uh, the 10, you know, brand minds in the same room that you get the best solutions at the end. Exactly the reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but they are doing exactly what they are taught to do, right? They are experts in their domain. They are they represent that expertise. They in, and they embodied it basically, right? So it makes no like from a, a purely ecological perspective, it makes no sense to them to collaborate because they, there's no there's no like actionability uh, to, towards that, right? From from their uh, uh, ecological ecological standpoint, this is this is where you you need this medium at the at in the middle that that does the translation in some in some way, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, yeah yeah it never happens <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i agree Ex unless you unless you have someone that understands both both sides and 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 that gets in the middle and that try to share uh, like to to you know you know what i mean like they, they, they are not positioning themselves in either is a side they are proposing like in a new path in the middle that is as good as the two other paths path, basically right yeah 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 Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That is ex exactly true. And this is why, in when you do when you do uh, um, um, narrative analysis and research, narrative research and narrative analysis, uh, and you 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 discover that within the landscape you are analyzing, there's two two strong voices, right? That's that splits apart, that, that creates this polarization. You don't want to find people that agree with both sides. You want to create a new narrative that supersedes both of the, the two that were present because it's easier to replace the two polar, polarization 
points uh, point of view with a new one th that is new to both sides right because it's then it becomes attractive to both sides uh despite the the differences than creating a, a middle which is always less of the two it's always less interesting than one of each right so in, in narrative when you want to move narratives basically you you create new narratives you don't try to merge two two, two opposite positions right uh, and this is where you, when you do collaborate, you want to avoid polarization by creating a medium that is a shared medium, right? Where everyone can mold a different way in different ways. And then and no one knows the final shape un until it happens, right? Uh, because then, then you create this novelty aspect of, of, uh, of a, of a design, of a designed medium, basically, uh, which is, which is not what education is trying to do, right? Education is trying to, is, is not to, to, to like, un, until people become researcher, it, it's, it's not, inter, it, they are not interested in creating novelty. They are interested in enforcing existing knowledge, which makes sense because you need to start somewhere, right? But, but it does not do it within a creative uh, aspect. It does it within a, a, a like, a, a, like, a, yeah, it's a, a model where people, you know, have to fit as many knowledge in them in their brain and re regurgitate it at some point to prove that they they know what they what they are talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and actually science science does not do what we discussed earlier. Like they don't do portfolio approach to that, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it, when you see where where money goes, um, in in like in science in, in science in general, like like let's say now, um, um. They they are looking for researcher 
uh, they, like they have money and they want to invest in in something like to to bring up some researcher doing that research, right? They follow trends. They follow basically what they are following is what we already know will be something that will be that will change uh, something about what we know. They don't invest in possibilities. They invest in they, they invest in the the thing that we know is the next step. They don't know exactly. They don't know exactly what will it be, but they know that this is the this is the direction, and this is exactly the issue. Like they don't they don't bet. Uh, they don't do necessarily enough small bets in what lies in the borders of what we know. You know. Mm-hmm. Yes. True. Mm. But if you Yes. And and this is why you don't want to invest all your money in one bet. You want to invest in in many small bets, and then that's what what open open op, like open science allows more than than other type of uh, you know finance uh, uh, science that they, they allows for fringed uh, ideas in science to be to be published. Where, whereas uh, in, in big reviews, it's it, uh, you know uh, publishers, you you you, it's basically, yeah, impossible for that kind of stuff to 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 appear at all because it's too fringed, right? <laughs> As a concept. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This is where you cannot think in terms of of one point, uh, one point solution, one point approach, right? You need multiple points of approach to the same issue, so you discover a lot of, like epistemologically, you discover a lot of knowledge that might be useful, but you don't know yet, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Matt, I don't hear you anymore. I don't know if it's my connection. Yeah, it's me. Okay, so I think it's uh, <laughs> it's the end. Uh, I don't know what happens with my connection. So uh, to anyone listening, uh, thanks. It was an interesting discussion. And yeah, see you next time. Cheers.